rising trout. It's probably the reason most of us got involved with fly fishing to begin with, but it only happens 10% of the time. This week, I'm at Lobstick Lodge in New Hampshire, and we hope the trout will be rising. I'm Bill Spicer. This is the new fly fisher. Some feel that catching trout on a dry fly is the epitome of fly fishing. I can't argue with that one. It's about as much fun as you can have on a trout stream because everything is so visual. This week we travel to New Hampshire just outside of Pittsburgh at Lobstick Lodge to learn how to fly fish for trout with dry flies. My guide for this trip is Lobstick Head Guide Bill Bernhardt. Bill has an easy-going manner and lots of patience, which makes him perfect for the novice angler. This drive to location is conveniently situated at the headwaters of the Connecticut River, which offers some of the finest fly fishing in New England. The Upper Connecticut River offers some good accessibility and a variety of fishing opportunities. The trophy stretch of the river, a short distance from the lodge, is a two-mile stretch of the river that is fly fishing only. In this stretch of river, you'll find native landlocked salmon, brook trout, rainbow trout, and brown trout. Trout rise only 10% of the time, but when they do, it can be magical. They rise to winged aquatic insects that are hatching. These insects may be mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, or terrestrial insects such as ants, beetles, or crickets. The two dominant hatches that happen on the Connecticut River are mayflies and caddisflies. It's important to know the life cycle of each of these insects in order to predict when they will hatch and the fish will rise. Right there. See one right here? Yeah, just this side of that little swirl mark. So only about 20 feet out, not even 20 feet out. So right, right here. Right where that leaf is floating, the lighter colored leaf. Yeah, right yeah. in there. Yeah, exactly. So it's that line. There's one right there. We have, we have a bunch of fish now starting to rise. Uh, it's, it's evening, it's about seven o'clock, and this is the ideal time when, when dry fly fishing becomes more active. So we got some along here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try. I've got some light Cahills. That's what we think is coming off. So uh, we just had a couple of rise here and I'm gonna give it a try. Right there, come on. Right there. Yes, yeah, you go. Got him. Very nice. Not very big, but I got them. Hey, it all, <laughs> it all counts. They all count. Dry fly, f uh, dry fly fishing is probably why most of us got into the sport. It's so much fun. It's very visual. Nice. You take care of this one and show it to mm -hmm. the camera for everybody. Sure thing. Nice, pretty little bow. Little bow, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Nice and clean looking fish. Yeah. Flies right in his beak. Get out of there. There we go. Top dead center, we call it. There you go. Wet my hands a little bit. There you go. Nice little bow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love trout fishing. I love trout fishing. There's what I wanted, right there. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice. Good job. Thank you. Got to get the right drift. If, 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 if in this case, they're taking mayflies, and if I have any kind of movement on the fly, it seems to be detrimental. So I had to get the fly in there for drag-free drift. We've got a whole line of, of fish down here that are feeding. This feels like a decent fish. Yeah. I don't know if I'm just fighting a current or what, yeah. but... It, it was yeah. a nice little sip, and you called the cast. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's not a bad fish. 
I can't, uh, I'm gonna fight it gingerly. I, I'm, I got four X tippet, which is light. And yeah, this is not a bad fish. Feels good. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Nice bow. That's yeah. a nice bow. I'll get his head up. Yeah. Oh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. There we go. Good man. Good job. Now that's a decent fish. Yes, sir. Nice, good eat. Now, that's more like it. That's a really nice rainbow. Beautiful, on a dry fly. I love it. I'll bring him down here. And away he goes. Love it, love it. Tomorrow we'll be wading the trophy waters that are only five minutes from the lodge. We'll be right back. The rise form will reveal what the trout is likely eating. Ooh, had For example, all. you might see a subtle surface disturbance in a slow, smooth run. The rise will only show the nose of the trout and the tail following. Usually a bubble is left behind. The subtle rises indicate food that isn't going anywhere, usually a mayfly done or a spinner drifting passively in the current. In this situation, even a five pound rainbow might not make much of a disturbance. It knows the food isn't going anywhere, so it doesn't make a rush at it. Now, on the other hand, you might see a splashy disturbance on the surface. Splashy rises are a reliable indicator that trout are pursuing food items towards the surface. Trout are chasing the food because it can get away. It might be a caddis pupa, which rises rapidly to the surface. Once there, the adult caddis immediately pops out and flies off. Trout know this and will strike hard and fast. The type of rise will dictate what presentation you will need to present. In the case of a mayfly, you will need a drag-free drift presentation, such as a marshmallow floating aimlessly in the current. With caddis flies, you add movement to your fly, such as drag or a skittering motion. The guide service up at Lobstick is, uh, it actually encompasses a lot. We have uh, a couple of guides full time on staff and then we also will bring in extra guides if we have to. And as far as the guide service goes, we have a little bit of everything. We have drift boat trips, we have small stream wade trips, we can offer uh, backpacking into the remote ponds and hauling float tubes back there. There's a lot of pond fishing. There's a little bit of everything for everybody. And, and then it's also one of those things where it's pretty user friendly, it's all public access. So if you want to go ahead and do it on your own, you certainly can do that too. And we offer everything from trout and salmon to bass to pike and uh, we'll do whatever anybody wants. Now I'm, I'm faced with a unique problem here. I have a lot of bush behind me. I can't back cast. The fish are actually rising just downstream from me. What do you do? Well, you have to side cast and then drop it down high and then follow it down. It's done like this. Side cast, drop it down and follow it down. Just like that. Mm. Now with caddis, we can skitter it a bit. Just a little skitter. The fish expect to see that and then dead drift it. Nice. Again, side cast, drop it down, and follow it down. Oh, oh. Yes, sir, got him. A CDC caddis, I couldn't see quite as well as I, no, I the other one. And I waited for the other one to move. <laughs> yeah, it works almost as well as an emerger. Yeah. Just something a little bit different for them to look at. Yeah, I got a little landlock. Is that what that is? Yeah, a little landlock salmon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are feisty. Well, I don't want to squeeze them. Yeah, they're a wild fish. Little landlocked salmon. Or as they say in Quebec, want a niche? Mm -hmm. 
One of the things we like to do is that when you get to the water, the first thing you, you don't want to do is that that's a beautiful pool over there, but you just don't want to charge right into it. What you want to do is you want to stop and kind of look around, kind of survey the landscape, and think to yourself, if I was a trout, where would I be? So, and, and most of the time, those fish are hanging right off the edges here. So what you want to do is you always want to just step gently in off the bank or even fish from the bank and then work the water closest to you and then gradually work your way out. So it's, uh, if I make this cast all the way across, I'm going across a couple of different currents. And if I keep my line down, it's going to grab the, the current's going to grab my line and pull my fly out erratically. So what I want to do is I want to make that cast. I'm going to lift that line up off the water, throw a little mend into it and just high stick my line. Now I'm lifting my leader, so now my leader isn't getting picked up by this current, and I can get a nice drag-free drift. And that's natural. And then a lot of times when we're fishing the cat, as Bill mentioned, we'll just kind of bounce it and skitter it back up. And the one thing here is that because we have moving water, the fish aren't as spooky. We can afford to get a little bit closer to them, so that's why we can fish a little bit accurate, more accurately, and consequently uh, you'll have better shots at fish. Oh, there you go. Woo! A little duffer. Really? There you go. There you go. That didn't take you long. No. Nice little landlock. Mm-hmm. There we go. Okay. Nice. And... Wow, he's feisty. This little guy. He's there, they fell. Oh. oh. Wow. There you go. Oh. Oops. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> Professional rigs. Yeah. After these messages, we're going to be heading back down to deeper water to use the drift boat and search for rising fish. So here up at Lovestick, some of the equipment that we would recommend that you would bring up would be, uh, if you're planning on fishing the small streams, a two or a three weight rod, either six and a half foot to a seven, a seven and a half foot rod would be absolutely ideal. It's great for, you know, casting in tight brush and catching little brookies. And then if you're gonna plan on fishing a little bit more of the bigger water, the uh, nine foot four weight would be ideal or a nine foot five weight. And if, if you only to bring one rod, this would be the rod to bring. It's a nine foot five, it's a four piece, it breaks down really well, uh, handles your day in and day out needs. It'll cast anything from a dry fly to a uh, double nymph rig strike indicator, fish and streamers with it. And this is a, it's a moderately priced rod. You don't need anything that's gonna break the bank, but uh, this will do the job just perfectly. The reels that we use up here at Lobstick, most of the time it's gonna be a reel that's gonna match your rod. So a four weight reel goes with a four weight rod and a five weight reel goes with a five weight rod. And the reels themselves, they're, uh, they're beautiful and everything, but you don't really need to break the bank on them. You don't need to spend that extra money necessarily to buy a really nice smooth drag. We have some bigger fish, but mostly the reel is just there to hold the line. Uh, you know, spool it on there, it looks nice. And once again, you don't have to break the bank for it. I got him. Ooh, missed him. <laughs> missed him. <laughs> He showed his whole side. <laughs> uh. Got him. Nice. There you go, Bill. Whoa. Little yumper. I love it. Yumping your knees. <laughs> I'm having a good time. <laughs> having a good time. That was the first cast after the last one. Nice. When it's on, when, when the dry flies are on, it, it, it's spectacular. Lots of fish, that's for sure. Another, oh, a little fatter. Yeah. A little fat rainbow. There we go. Yeah. Oh, they got a, a lot of food. Yeah, that flies out. That was, they grabbed the, the small took, one again? No, I took the top one that took time. Took the top one that yeah. time. Yeah. Ooh, he's gone. The setup for dry fly fishing is a two fly rig. 
make sure you check your regulations to see if it's allowed in your area. A floating line was used to a 9 foot tapered leader then the first dry fly. A 14 inch piece of tippet was attached to the bend of the fly and a second dry fly was then attached. The tippet size was determined by the size of the fly. We took the hook size and divided it by 3 and that would give us the tippet size. If the hook size is 18, 3 divided into that tells us a 6x tippet is used. If the fish get fussy and seem spooky, try lengthening your leader to 15 feet. This usually makes the difference. Got him. Woo! What? Where'd that come from? You see him scoot over? Yeah. Wow. Oh, and he let go. But that went, hit over here and went zoom. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good there. call. Yeah. That has been a long time coming. My goodness. <laughs> We've been battling here trying to figure out what they're taking. Now I've got an emerger on and I've also got a dry fly. I think he took the dry. Not quite sure yet. Yep. Here we go. And he took the dry fly, didn't he? He did. That's yeah. another chubby one there. Yep. Well, they've been feeding. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just plain fun. So hopefully we found the combination uh, with a dry fly and a merger. Uh, we'll, we'll show you uh, during the fly section exactly how we've rigged this up and the flies themselves. They're very tiny. The dry flies we used on this episode were the usual Parachute Light Cahill, Elk Haired Caddis. These were the matching the hatch flies as Light Cahill mayflies were hatching along with caddis flies. These were the right size and color of what was hatching. If no insects are observed, then bring along some attractor flies such as Royal Wolves, Adams, Madam X, and Stimulators. Don't forget to bring an assortment of streamers and nymphs with you if the fish are not rising. These include beadhead woolly buggers, brown beadhead nymphs, and prince nymphs of various sizes. We'll be right back. Here at Lobstick, we do a little bit more than just fishing. It is a very family-friendly, family-orientated area. There's a lot to do outside. We have uh, kayak rentals and canoe rentals. Uh, we have motorboat rentals. There's uh, ATV rentals, which are very popular. But there's also a lot of hiking trails. Uh, people will take the uh, boat out to the, the remote ponds and go kayak the bogs. The best time to come up to Lobstick for dry fly fishing, in my opinion, is probably July and August. Uh, we have tailwater fisheries, so the water's always cold. Even in the dog days of August, it's always going to be cold water. And we have a lot of great hatches, stoneflies, caddises, uh, that time of the year. So it can be a lot of fun. Nice. Got him. Dynamite. Good shot, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was good shooting. Thank you. Thank you. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Oh, that's a good fish. Good man. Good man. Good job. Yes, sir. Now that's that's a little more like it. Yeah. Here we go. Now that's that's just what it's all about. Why we fly fish. Taking nice rainbows like that on top water, it's outstanding. Just outstanding. Got him, got him, got him, got him, got him. Cast to the rising fish and try to put it, oh, no more than a couple of feet ahead. So you make sure you got a drag free drift when you reach the fish. And hopefully you can fool them. And keep them on. I've had a little trouble tonight keeping them on. And 
then took the back fly, which is a little bit smaller, isn't it? Yep. Yep. There we go. It's just Very about nice. a size 18. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right. There you go. Flies out. Yep. Good man. Good man. Nice. It's a nice little rainbow again. Yeah, nice little bow. A little bit bigger. Yeah. They're chubby tonight, that's for sure, because they're gorging themselves like crazy. They all got big bellies. Beautiful. Beautiful. Well, we've run out of time for today. I want to thank Lopstick Lodge for hosting us and Bill Bernhardt for guiding us. It's not always about the size of fish that counts. It's about the experience. And we had a wonderful experience this week. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines, and we'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Orvis Sporting Traditions Scientific Anglers Umpqua Feather Merchants Superfly Fly Fishing Made Easy